adjust my thought so that I can, you know, start doing doing this. And well, for me, it's like moving energy out in the ethers. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Greetings. Oh my goodness. Hey, yeah, we're just. Ball is too much for me. I don't like people. Yeah. They're half <laughs> my face, so... Uh... When I was teaching at Santa Cruz, uh, stuff I didn't want to do. Oh, yeah. Um, how do you... Mr. Alex! I'm ready for my close-up! Um, I love talking about myself. You'll find out about it. <laughs> I mean, I want him to like my work, but... You know. <laughs> the world is very, you know, chaotic. Excuse me while I film your chest. <laughs> I've always liked to draw, but um, definitely my first masterpiece was in kindergarten when we were asked to do a, a self-portrait. And my self-portrait at the time I was, I had a very bad haircut, rotten teeth, and was quite round, and I drew this lovely woman with long dark hair and bows on either side and big red lips and a really nice little waistline standing in a, in a, a garden of flowers. So that was my first masterpiece. I started doing art when I was a baby, you know, when I was really young. My grandmother was an art teacher for the school system and so whenever she watched me after school, I was totally immersed in it. Yeah. You know, we all, everybody in my family was. Yeah. Randy Warren and I actually designed the uh, the Wildcat logo for the yearbook and stuff for Evie King. Really? I was raised in an apartment building in the Bronx. Oh, wow. Do you think that's a little different than this? A little bit. <laughs> I guess room 10, which is the City Hall's uh, meeting room, is where I went to school, uh, went in my fifth grade class, Mr. Mm -hmm. Kinney. <laughs> so it brings back it's memories so when I'm there. I have been um, doing art well since I was probably around your age. Um, I was a Placer High School student. Um, I went through the art program there with um, Kim Brown and back in those days. When I was in high school, I could tell that it was going to have something to do with painting or drawing. I didn't know it was going to be about photography. And uh, I would say the bulk of my career was in the photography field. Mm -hmm. And that sort of happened, I think, also because of my experiences of traveling. Mm -hmm. more I traveled, the more my art was paintings and objects of art from uh, that experience. Larry and Toby and they're advocating for me, and now it's like, now I'm having art shows and affecting people and doing the same obnoxious thing yeah. that I was doing in 1997 but now I'm doing it like in a museum in Rome. I first did clay, I did pottery at Sierra College, and then there was other people and they were doing sculptural stuff. So I started adding sculptures onto my pots at Sierra College. Um, and so I kind of got back to that. So I've done that piece, that's uh, called uh, Jesus Went Fishing, kind of large German brown and the rooster crow. It's got a little rooster on his head. I was like super stoked on like all the stencils in there, but I was like nervous to talk to him because I thought he was like, like big red. <laughs> <laughs> like I thought he was like, he was just so much of a symbol that, that uh, I don't know, it's just kind of intimidating. It's evolved in just like the way I've matured. Um, I really didn't start doing the surreal type stuff until sophomore year. I usually just draw ghetto scenes, kind of like scenes from the ghetto. That's like what I wanted to draw. I thought, you know, I like art. I want to teach, maybe I should teach art. So during the course of my college, there's a class in there where you had to go sit and observe a class, and in this case, obviously an art class. So for one semester, I came over here to Placer High School for, you know, maybe it was an hour a week or something. I sat in in one art class. I thought, you know, this is what I want to do. And so at that point, I decided, uh, yeah, I, I'd like to teach high school art. It's messy because I'm in the middle of inspiration, so I bring things out in front of the shop and I look at them and, you know, I, I pick things through from there and, and go on to project. So this is where I work. Yeah. I bring my 
you know, stuff out here. And this is your office. Yeah, <laughs> this is my office. Pretty cool. Huh? Yes, I have to, you know, get going on slipping up this dragon's head, and I've got a Abraham Lincoln hat here with twenty-five dollars worth of pennies in it because it's Abraham Lincoln's two hundredth birthday. Most creative, right, right here. here. Yeah, right here. It's one of those things that I think that, you know, when you're doing what you love, you just mm -hmm. kind of lose track of time and it yeah. just kind of, kind of flows for you. You want to, what about Danny? Does he have a chair? Danny, pull up a chair. Let's a put chair. this. You guys, I take you out to the art studio. Oh. Oh. So it's all, it's all messed up right now, but that's because I'm in the middle of like doing a bunch of stuff. You so. <laughs> This one was what I was working on. It's almost finished, but now all I gotta do is put the um, have the souls being sucked out of these creatures, and these people. Yeah. There's a rabbit with battle armor on. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is kind of like what they look like when they're first. I mean, growing up in Hawaii, where the um, the light is different than here. It's very vivid. You know, the water colors, ocean colors, the jungle colors, fish colors are always very, very vivid. When I was a teenager, I had a huge influence by the music industry. It was the time of the Beatles, you know, of course. <laughs> what, how could you not be influenced by the Beatles? How has Plaster's art department influenced your life? Oh, it's been crazy. Like, that's the only reason I'm doing as well as I am, I guess. Because I've seen other art departments, like the Delaware art department, like not to bag on anybody, it kind of sucks. Definitely, I had two really amazing mentors, um, which influenced me and in terms of going into and pursuing a career in the arts. Um, I've had a lot of art history. I've had, I love architecture, and I think those are definitely influences for me. I love to see how things are put together. And I love color. I mean, color to me is magical, so. Mm -hmm. That's definitely an influence. People who have influenced me is like Salvador Dali, Pablo Picasso, a lot of the old people, really old <laughs> people. It's basically everybody <laughs> influences me. Everybody who does art, whether it's good or bad. What does Larry Alberts all about? Larry Alberts teaches art. Does he produce art? Yes. That's right. That's the spirit. I've grown up in a happy household. I have nothing to regret in my life. My art reflects how happy I am and how, how uh, positive I feel about uh, images, things. I mean, when I'm working in the studio and I'm creating things like this, I'm, I'm laughing the whole time. I'm laughing about all the thoughts about stereotypes and about, you know, what people are going to think. And, and then I go and I put my things in galleries and and I listen to people as they're walking around making jokes or just really understanding what the piece was all about and laughing until they're crying. And they always say to me, oh my God, you must just be really hilarious all the time. <laughs> my, my dad was not amused, couldn't figure out why he was sending me, sending me to a four-year Big Ten university for an art degree, but um, I think now he doesn't have many regrets. Yeah. I'm a big brush painter. I work very fast. I, I surge and I collapse. That's probably, that's probably how I think as well. I, I get a lot of things going on and I spill them out as quickly as I can because if I don't, you know, uh, they can escape. Right now I teach very little bit. Most of the time I'm in here just making my own decisions and making whatever I want to make, whatever I choose to make, whatever the clay, you know, decides to be made into a lot of times. I call it a job because it is. It becomes a job. When you're doing it full time, it becomes just like everybody else. You, you make sure that you get up in the morning and uh, brush your teeth. Uh, but get, get up in the morning and you've got a job to do. You've got to discipline yourself and be in to do your eight or 10 hours a day. Or I'm not saying that, that you would fail. I would just say that it would be a lot harder for you to make a living if you don't keep to some uh, form of, of regiment. I'm not defined by any one person or any stereotype. I really don't care what people think. <laughs> I mean, I want them to like my work, but you can't do something just because somebody wants you to. You have to feel it in your heart. I don't know if art shaped a lot of my life, but the need to make things has shaped my life. You know, 
know, I don't know how I feel about art. Art's bizarre. Ooh. It has um, given me a good job that I love. Good people. Oh, right? Um, sweet. Right? So, it's a good, satisfying career. Teacher. This is definitely not a traditional class. It's holistic teaching, you know, and it's just an opportunity to sort of express yourself in a safe environment without judgment, because that really is my goal. Not, not so much having pretty pictures people can show. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that happens. That's the benefit of working in this way. When I started, I think probably I, I got into teaching because my favorite teacher was my art teacher. You know, what has art or photography done for me, it would have to be that it, it gave me the, a momentary sort of sense of worth, a sense of belonging to the universe. It also gave me sort of a momentary bravery. You know, there's no time like the present. You see the bug, you photograph the bug now. You don't wait for the bug to come back and you, know, you think about it in between. So that sort of momentary reaction to stuff. So if you were to ask me, why do I paint? And you know, I believe that's my particular gift and the way I could connect with people and offer them the opportunity to open up to their possibilities. That's my goal. You know, everybody has their own idea of what art is and what they love. I don't actually have to create pieces so that people will buy them. I create whatever's in my head and I'm just lucky enough that, that I'm successful that way. This is my first dollar, <laughs> and I still have it. <laughs> I want to play. I want to, I want to play in the game. Artists want to play in the game. They don't want to watch. Well, to me, it's like a living, breathing expression that will keep unfolding, you know, as long as I stay honest, and I intend to. I like to reflect something that makes people maybe smile or think about something, you know, and say, oh, that's, that's kind of clever. How does art change your life? Oh boy, you know what, I couldn't live without it at this point. I've found how to relieve all my stress by creating. I've processed through all the tough times of my life by, by creating artwork. And it's not all about me, it's also about the experience of having pieces in a gallery and having people come to the show and, and be moved by what you're doing. The whole ideology is based on expression and like there's no rules like art is supposed to be this complete free zone of doing awesome stuff. Everyone has a personal responsibility to find themselves. You know, what does that mean? You know, I mean, you know, the persona that, that you create within yourself, the, who you are and what you are about and what your interests are and, and what your art is about, what photography is about, what you collect, how you live your life, how you see the world, how you, how you connect with that world, has been like such a driving force in me. I feel like uh, how, how lucky I have been to, to find these things or to make it a priority. I want to make this my life's career and like be painting in my studio 12 hours a day, just selling my art. Simple as that. Simple as that. The sooner that you dedicate yourself to the art life, as soon as you dedicate it, the sooner your style is going to happen. And it's going to mutate. And the more time you spend doing it, the better you get. It's going to get so good. It's just going to change. It's just skill though. You got to put in work and energy. After a while, you'll be like, you'll get really good. Your own work that you put in, into it will open up doors in your mind. Doors to different things you never thought you'd try. I think the big, biggest factor is that you put your, the truth of your life in your work. And you work really hard for, you know, a lifetime and make, make your art. I don't think it's so much what we make or what the reasons for us to make or what it is. I think it's just the making. You know, that activity, that process is so important. For the future, are you going to be like 91 years old and still doing art? Probably. I'll be here another 20 years. Another 20 years. 20 plus. Art satisfies the things that are inside me that need to be said. And if I can't say it through word, I say it through my hands. 
There you go. Beautiful. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> <laughs> so emotional. That was perfect. Don't get bored. Have fun. <laughs> Just keep doing what you're doing and be disciplined about it. Because, you know, we do get the title of flaky artist, so yeah. just keep on doing it, and, uh, and it'll all work out the way it's supposed to. I've got a whole bunch of decisions to make with this piece. So if you don't like to make decisions, then, then maybe you're probably not going to like be making art very much. Get a sl slough off the problems, just shoulder them off, and then move on to the next step. One step at a time. You can't worry about trying to leapfrog. you got to, you know, baby steps all the way in, in terms of anything. You have to have a passion for it, you have to love what you're doing. And that will lead to the commitment, I think. Um, and then you just have to stick with it. Find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. But that also is find a passion you love and you'll have joy for the rest of your life. Woo! <laughs> Enjoy your life, it goes fast. Uh, don't stress about stuff too much. Do something fun that you like to do. Try to make it work. Try to find something in life that you enjoy doing, or at least people you enjoy being around while you're doing it. Uh, it's great, you know, working with Red and Larry. It's awesome. Go with your passion. Don't ever try to make money at it, because the money kills you. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So art can go anywhere. You do anything, and that's what we need. I mean, it, things have to be pushed because it's art. <laughs> no, you're at your peak right now. Courage. I think it's about courage because there's a lot of things you have to walk to to be in light and to be in joy. I think it's all right to be in that state, but I think so many other things get in the way that it's so easy to um, forget that that's really who we are. Another thing too um, that I think kind of gets lost in translation is that back when I was growing up and in grade school mm -hmm. and in junior high and high school, we had amazing art programs. Yeah. There weren't art docents. There was an art room and you had art every day. And, that, and, they, and they worked it into your education. So in my art classes, I don't give any assignments. There's no requirements. There's no grading. Um, but we learn a whole heck of a lot. You know, and most of it is learning about how to make your own decisions. I'm not going to have all 30 students follow the same footprint, especially in art. Yeah. You know, I tell them, you got to find out what it is in the mysteries inside yourself and try to get them out with your hands in this dirt. You know, figure it out. It's very challenging because they almost would prefer you say, okay, everybody's going to start off by making a box. Duh. Yeah. So they have to sit there in their stool and make a freaking box. Uh, as you can see around you, you Do can't you produce see artists. You produce very well. That's well, well. That's a funny deal. Do mm. I do anything for people like Skinner? Let's talk about that. Did I do anything for Skinner? No, not yeah. a thing. <laughs>